Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I'd like to start off by saying thank you for all the new subscribers and hello to you. As I'm out in the real world, I talk about what it is that I do with astrology and tarot. And sure enough, this channel grows steadily, but surely. Um, so I just wanna say thanks for the support. Um, it means a lot. Um, another announcement is I am hosting a workshop. Uh, it's part of a camping retreat put on by my dear friend, Meta. If you want more information about that, I'll put it in the description box below. Um, it's happening July 14, 15, 16. So if you're available that weekend, you wanna jump on and join us. It's a very affordable um, all women's retreat. We're working with the lower three chakras. It is a perfect time to be doing so and tapping into the divine feminine. Um, I can get more into that maybe in another video, but without further ado, let's talk about the energies for this week. Um, I'm recording this on Wednesday of the week that this is for, the week of June 26th through July 2nd. We're working with first quarter moon energy. It's in Libra. At the same time, Mars is square Uranus. If you remember, I had said something about this at the end of last week's video about being aware of psychic vampires. Just, you know, and it doesn't have to be as malicious sounding as that might sound, I think it's just more about understanding where your energy begins and ends and knowing where the energy of others begins and ends because the tendency of Libra is to do things together. And this summer, specifically next month, and actually right around the time of this retreat, we have the um, North Node and South Node um, regressing because the nodes move in a backwards fashion versus forwards fashion like the rest of the planets. So they are always in retrograde, if you will. North node is moving from Taurus into Aries and South node from Scorpio into Libra. And if South node, Libra energy is here for to use that, I mean, it's relevant, then what this period of time is wanting to teach us is that we can stifle our own growth by doing things in groups or in pairs all the time. We can do ourselves a disservice to lean too far into the needs of others. What you do for others, what you offer others, even as your gifts, has to start with yourself. And I think that's true across the board. Like, how can you teach something? How can you preach something if you don't practice it in your, in your daily life? So at the same time, there might be somebody wanting to, somebody or a situation putting you in a certain place, or maybe this is, for example, something you were told a long time ago, or even as a child, that is like a belief that you carry about yourself, right? Past life or childhood stuff that simply isn't true anymore. And so I think with the energies available to us, not just this week, but basically the unfolding of the collective energies for the summer is where are you proving yourself wrong and like in like the best way possible where are you breaking through your own limiting beliefs and patterns that maybe weren't even your own but instilled in you or given to you or impressioned upon you and i say that because we have we talked about lilith last week we're talking about lilith again this week um i don't want to get too much into the weeds about all of these transits this is something i could talk about at length but for the here and now I think it's just beneficial for us to talk about the themes and then get into our reading to see what astrological connections we can make with the intuitive messages coming from the cards. Uh, so listen to these, right? There's the psychic vampires. We already talked about that. And don't rely on, don't rely on impulsive fantasies. Don't rely on your fantasies. Uh, there's a heightened ability to draw insights. Be aware of impulsive actions, accidents, activate your body's intelligence, express your creative outlet, whether socially or sexually. Okay. That's Mars square Uranus for sure. Uh, Mercury is in cancer. That's that, that's the energy of activate your body's intelligence. Really. It's a time of it being kind of easier to feel things. And they say, you got to feel it to heal it. So, um, in this case, we're not relying, you know, with Mer while Mercury's in Cancer, we're not relying so much on 
overthinking. We're not relying so much on the intel in, on intellectualizing our feelings. As a Aquarius Venus, I think that's something that I a loop that I get stuck in all the time is rationalizing what my emotions may be and what they're telling me. Mercury in Cancer is the opposite of that. It wants to know how does it feel? Okay, you can logic your way in in and out of stuff, but does it feel right or does it feel wrong? Be open to your intuition. Then we have some Venus and Chiron, Sun and Saturn transits, both in um, in a trine, very harmonious. Reclaiming yourself, your personal and personality development, releasing your innate powers. Innate, as in something that was always there and just locked up. Um, demand more, expect the best. Demand more, expect the best. I think we are more and more like entering a world where people are not afraid to be bold. I think that there's a lot on the line collectively. Um, I think it's great because we're becoming emboldened for all of us to be uniquely ourselves. Um, and it's not to distinguish ourselves necessarily because that is an act of the ego to say I'm better than somebody but to honor thyself is sort of like the first commandment if you will right I actually don't know or remember the act the whatever the commandments the commandments are but I'm just talking in my hypothetical book of like moral compass to honor thyself is like one of the most important things to realize in one's lifetime. And so we're having a lot of Lilith and Chiron um, transits this month that I've been focusing on because they've been showing up. And Lilith is that, that black moon, right? That repressed side. It basically, it's the point of the moon or it's an asteroid, depending on which you study, it kind of can appear two or three different ways astrologically, but think of it this way. It's always the dark side of the moon. It's the part we don't see. It's the part that we ignore. It's the part that doesn't get any attention, but you have to take the dark with the light. Who are you in your darkest moments? How can you still honor and love yourself in those moments? How can you still, um, you know, how do we apply that to the Aries Libra axis that is forthcoming in the next month? Um, I think that this will have a lot to do with your own personal initiative, right? And how, how it impacts you personally will be distinct from that of others or maybe those around you. But we're going to be asked and, and have opportunities to take initiative, to make decisions based on those um, repressed, unnoticed parts of ourselves to say, no, this is a part of me. We've created a world. We live in a world. A world was created that we exist in now that is kind of built for best case scenario like across the board it's built for those who are already like well off it's designed for people with wealth to continue having wealth but it's not built for um for those who are struggling um with mental illness um have, dis have physical disabilities um who are social socioeconomically deprived historically and so I, th I mean if we take those themes from like micro to macro collectively we have to start recognizing in which ways the world has been designed to continue the repression of our like deepest the deepest parts of ourselves and so we're just shining light light on that at this time and I think that the next two and a half years, which is the length of the nodal cycle, and over the next 20 years, right, Pluto moving into Aquarius, we talked about that at the beginning of the month and last month, 
those two things collectively will, or together, um, will dictate how we innovate as a society to move in that direction of self-love, healing, and basically what it's going to feel like is, is adding an entire new dimension to humanity. We are more than they said we were, and we're capable of more than, it, than they said they were and that we ever thought possible. Okay, let's finish this up. Hold on, music just started playing. Can you hear it? I don't know where it's coming from. Okay. That was really weird. Okay, and finally, the last thing I want to talk about is... Okay, that's going to be the, um, the the song of the week. I'm going to put in the description box below every week. There is music to listen to. And um, yeah, I was going to pick a different one that I'm like really into right now, a different song. But I think it'll be that one. We'll, we'll pick another one. We'll, I'll, I'll share the other one with you another time. The last thing I want to say is Neptune goes retrograde in Pisces. Neptune has been in Pisces for a very long time. It's in its rulership house, right? Pisces rules Neptune. So this is about fantasy versus reality. I think that, f and online you'll see that people sort of will argue or just present opposing thoughts about whether this means more clarity or less clarity. And I would argue that that means less clarity overall, <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of what is going on with that. This is a time to call upon your inner strength reserves. Things should flow easily at this time, but don't let your guard down. Now is the time to do your best work. With Neptune going retrograde, I want you to look up in your birth chart, which house does Pisces rule in your birth chart? If you don't know the rulership, you can do a quick exercise to find out which house Sorry, which, yeah, which house is ruled by which zodiac sign, whether you have any intercepted signs and what those could possibly mean. That is being activated for us now. So inspiration, delusion, subconscious versus self-confidence. You are living your life, not someone else's version of it. You are living your life and not somebody else's version of it. I think Libra is sort of that entrapment too, a little bit like Pisces, Libra energy that's here is uh, we can sometimes put that expectation on others that they are somebody that we think that they are and they're not. Uh, work with Lilith. Okay, this is a great time to channel creative energies. Um, go, if you have any creative endeavors, go ahead and start them and work on them. You can in invest more energy into that. And this was a period of six months that Neptune is in retrograde for us to sort of put those intentions into motion. Uh, working with Lilith, shining light on our most repressed parts. I think this takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of practice. And it takes a lot of self-love and, and just honoring yourself and wherever you're at in the present moment. Absolutely. If you follow me on Instagram, I post from time to time self-love journaling prompts in my stories you can follow me at the dot intuitive dot lens yeah let's go ahead and get some tarot messages from the reading we just did the astrology collective energies what is showing up at this time I swear I thought I saw a card reversed. I guess not. Oh, there it is. Uh, the Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. 
something's trying to come in, but we're a little bit distracted or we're doing too much. Our hands are full juggling something or another. Um, this is a card of managing your priorities, keeping your priorities straight. Ten of Cups underneath. This is about happiness maybe wanting to come through. Or simply like the invitation to the energy of peace. Sometimes we do too much um, thinking we're doing things that will bring us peace, but peace is inherent within us. There's nothing you can do or should need to do to have peace. It is there. It is always there. Just your simple intention to invite it into your life, to do its magic, to release that which no longer serves you. And on that note, I will say we are headed towards the full moon in Capricorn. <sighs> Capricorn is a lot about that ambitious energy, us going after the things that we want, being dedicated, loyal, and with every full moon, we release and we accept and we find peace. So with that, I might say something like, what are you, what have you invested into that is no longer worth your investment? What are you finished with? How do you put down one of those two pentacles so that you can, so that the next thing can come in? Has something um, overstayed its welcome? It's time to put it down, okay? And I think that the full moon in Capricorn supports this nodal shift in that way because Aries is all about, the North Node in Aries will be all about taking initiative, showing leadership. And Libra is about going with the flow and things remaining the same. It's a different kind of harmonious. You know, sometimes we do need that sort of radical change and we hold on to things for longer than what is necessary. So underneath we have three of pentacles, two of wands, five of cups, four of pentacles. These are, this is all um, minor arcana, just like all, sorry, like there's the two of pentacles again. This is all petty shit. This is all little potato stuff. What are we worried about? So I'm seeing this is, there's like issues of self-worth you're waiting for somebody or something to change. You're looking outside of yourself, outside of your current situation, thinking that there's something better around the corner or that you've somehow been devastated to a point of like nothing is changing. This is always going to stay the same. You're unable to make a decision. There's like in both emotionally and physically this inability to be to feel seen or to feel like you are able to change anything about your situation. So page of pentacles, I mean, there's, and then 10 of cups again, there's not happiness, happiness where I thought there was and king of cups. Okay. So finally we see sort of cancer energy show up there. Um, not just cancer. Um, but maybe. I forget who the King of Cups is. Anyway, you could consider all three of the water signs with that. But just that, so... <laughs> love how, like, a whole bunch of the reading came out underneath, came out from under the pile. Um, what I say about Mercury in Cancer, this is a time to tap into our emotions, to know ourselves, practice communicating those things, that's how we work with the energy of Mercury and Cancer. Let the body tell you intuitively what it feels is good um, instead of taking so much for, um, as virtue, what you see directly in front of you. As above, so below. It's almost like, yeah, what you think of yourself, what you hold, any beliefs you hold about yourself, is what manifests in front of you. King of Cups. This is like a st emotionally stoic. This is a, this is somebody who has mastered their emotions. And so, if you, f you know, it, 
on the inverse side, it could also mean somebody who is just not showing emotion. And so not showing true emotion. I also see here like two of cups in reverse, two of pentacles in reverse, five of cups. There's a need for hope and optimism. And there's also this message here of like, you are not alone. I see that there is somebody feeling alone and sort of waiting for this counterpart, but it's like, you have to realize you have your own back. You have the power to change something that isn't fulfilling anymore. You simply have to claim it. Well, let's, let's, get, let's get more information about this actually. The Emperor in reverse, Seven of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, the Sun, Seven of Swords, there's two Sevens, Eight of Swords, Queen of Wands, Five of Wands, Six of Cups. So right away I see in the center card, Six of Swords in the reverse. This is about resistance to moving on. Um, also the Eight of Swords in reverse. Which is positive, actually. There's this confidence to move beyond some old lim limiting belief that comes from childhood. There's something about that here. It's like we're finally letting go. We're finally lightening up about something. We're finally finding that inner voice that feels like you can be your own best friend. I think that's wonderful. Seven of Cups. There's Neptune. Right There's the Neptune energy of, look at all of these options that are ahead of me. Look at the smorgasbord of um, yeah, different, different things you could do or options. This is, our head, this is the energy of your head, out, head being up in the clouds, being a bit fantasy driven. So what I see here is that this is actually a, a progression towards healing because what it's showing me is the first step is letting go. Emperor in reverse. And what we invite in instead is the Queen of Wands energy, which is that best friend energy, which is understanding you are magic. There are no rules or structures that can truly limit you. We are moving towards a place of knowing and understanding we are truly limitless. There's a confidence that comes in for us to heal uh, limiting self-beliefs from the past. And in the interim, what we, the bridge for us to get there is um, this Leo energy, the sun. Uh, remember that, um, is Mars moving into Leo now? But Venus, Venus is moving into Leo, right? Venus is going to be retrograding in Leo this summer. There was some other Leo stuff happening. I can't remember right now, but that is the sun, right? You can look it up and, and see which house Leo rules in your chart. That's going to be extremely relevant. There, be, 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 between this confidence that appears, this nine of pentacles, and the release, in between there, there's this emotional process for you to simply imagine and to feel in your heart, in your soul, that more is possible. And there might be some resistance mentally, like our brains might say like, well, that wouldn't work because X, Y, Z, or it's just simply not possible. And, you know, stay in your comfort zone. There will be some, the five of, five of wands, some conflict some energy, some tension between the emotional side saying, this is what's possible. This is what I really want to go after. This is about your big, big, big dreams. And realizing that it's these self-limiting beliefs that have been in your way this whole time. So this is about you getting out of your own way for sure and becoming more confident. Confid oh, there's um, strength underneath in reverse. That's Leo also. This is a reminder to 
be real with yourself about everything you've had to get through to be where you are right now. This is a very empowering reading. That what was showing up underneath is a bit petty. It's a bit like we're, we're getting stuck up on little things either because we're not receiving the love care attention that we would like to see from others or from a situation. We're holding on to something that no longer serves us. We're feeling regret. We're feeling lack. We're feeling like it's just all a bit overwhelming. And Page of Pentacles, King of Cups, it's time to learn about what is your emotional foundation. What is your where do you find stability within your emotions? What is that grounding point? And then using that because we're going to be, I mean, Mercury is in Cancer. Venus is going to be retrograding Leo. Uh, Neptune is retrograde for the next six months. I think the next six months are about us learning how to show up in a world, in the world that is more feeling and less robotic and profit driven. That is resonant with the frequency of love and care not that everything is always sunshine and rainbows all the time but just that there we have other priorities now we're realizing collectively and on an individual level for each of us the things that had not worked out that we have to leave behind a certain way of doing things and moving more into this place of honoring yourself honoring the emotions that you feel and showing up with those things to work with. Realizing who's there to meet you halfway. And if they're not, that's not a trip. Don't even trip. That's a slight resistance. We end the reading with the Six of uh, Cups. This is a very beautiful, harmonious energy. It also is indicative of the past, um, of our childhood, and the presence of sweet memories. And so some of you may be having five, six of cups and moving to seven. And we have the 10 of cups in reverse. Some of us may be experiencing memories and thinking about how good things were in the past and how we'd like to return possibly to the way that things once were. I think that's okay on some levels but not to the extent that we are getting caught up in this seven of cups energy, caught up in the illusion that what was is what will be in the future. It falls in conflict with this Neptune energy here of having big, big dreams for the future as well. Don't sell yourself short. This is a time to be dreaming big, uh, to be having the big, bold vision um, that you have for your life uh, moving forward. It's going to take confidence, and I think the confidence you can lean into this energy of the Queen of Wands. This is about your personal alchemy, realizing that you are magic, that you have the power to manifest whatever it is you want in this life. But it shows up, it's, it really begins to show and it roots into your um, ability to honor yourself, all of your strengths, not all of this petty stuff that's showing up here in the underneath. I think that whatever this is, this waiting, this, let me go back to my notes real quick because actually all of these things kind of showed up. Um, inspiration, delusion, issues with subconscious and self-confidence. You may be waking up to realizing you're living someone's el someone else's version of your life and not your own. And so this King of Cups shows up to realize, um, to help us to realize you are the master of your life, the master of your emotions. The emperor in reverse also says, and this time this Neptune retrograde kind of says also go with the flow. If there's any tension and resistance to letting something go, I encourage you to work with that full moon. Um, you can learn a lot about that actually at the um, upcoming retreat. I'm going to put a link to that below in the description box so you can sign up uh, if you're interested. Again, the dates for that are... 14, 15, and 16. I'm doing a workshop on cosmic conversations. We're talking about tarot and astrology. We're going to do a deck interview and some other fun stuff. So I hope to see you there.
Don't forget to check out the music below. Thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you on the next one.